Justin Lynch is here on Phillies Country Station 92.5 XTU. It's the CMA coverage, and it's all brought to you by DHY Motorsports. For revved up gift ideas for motorsports enthusiasts. You a motorsports enthusiast, Dustin? You know what? Yes. Um, grew up racing motocross and and dirt track. Honestly, we we still are into dirt tracking. Nice. Uh, my dad's got a late model, so we frequent the dirt tracks in the summer months. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I was listening to you on the radio last week, and you were talking about how busy you are, and you were coming back from the West Coast, I think it was, and you were going to yeah. sleep in, <laughs> and you weren't going to go to a writing session, and then you see, you're like, you talked yourself into it, you got out of bed, hour of yeah. sleep, and you wrote Thinking About You. Yep. So talk about the dedication to that craft. You know, it's, it's one of those, this has happened multiple times throughout my, my writing career, uh, whether it's illness or... Uh, just being tired and worn out. It seems like something special always comes out of those zombie like states of mind. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but <laughs> I have found success and just pushing through. And, and unfortunately, um, every time something like that comes up, it reminds me of, Hey, you just got to show up for work, you know, and good things happen. So it continues to push me. And uh, obviously you want to write whenever you're feeling great, but uh, sometimes when you run down, those melodies pop out of nowhere and you don't know where they come from. What is the strangest place that anything ever has ever come to you? I will say, uh, well, I don't know if it's strange because we, we do do this multiple times a day. Hopefully all of us take showers uh, daily. <laughs> and uh, so at the shower is a very common place for me to, uh, to get ideas melodically um, and, and really think about music. I don't know what it is about. I, I've always, since I was learning how to play guitar um, and learning how to sing, I would always lock myself in my bathroom in my childhood home just because of the, uh, the acoustics in there um we're so we're so good and, and nice and when you first learn how to play and sing that reverb that natural re reverb coming off the the tile and whatever else is in the bathroom uh, was cool so i don't know if that's why i find comfort and and those ideas continue to come to me there but a lot of the song ideas do happen in the shower well you've done a lot of great work over the last few years um so when you came out of the pandemic did, did you feel like you lost a step on anything or did you feel like you've you got some work accomplished that, you know, the pandemic was completely new territory for me because mm -hmm. I was stuck at home, which has never been the case when writing. And so I had to, to really relearn how to write at the house. Um, I've been used to going into Nashville at the very least. A lot of my writing happens on the road, on the bus. So having to learn how to write songs at my home, I've always tried to separate that from where I, where I create music. So mm -hmm. I had to kind of build a home studio and um, I had right out of the gate found success uh, the first song I wrote via Zoom, another artist ended up recording. Um, and so it was like, okay, we can do this. You know, that was a great kind of thumbs up right away that I was going to be able to find some creativity and, and hammer through those months. And, um, you know, I, I don't think I would, I learned so much through those, through those months. I don't think I ever would have taken the time off myself, uh, you know, voluntarily. So um, I'm, I'm kind of glad there's a sil silver lining in there somewhere, no doubt. And it looked like you'd been balancing your home and work pretty easily. Like I, I there was some pictures, uh, maybe it was about a year ago where you were clearing out some of the land because you were real, you were, you were trying to be a steward uh, forester with yeah. your own land by bringing back some of the native Tennessee uh, plants that, that had been lost throughout the generation. Absolutely. Yeah. That land. So how's that going? It's going wonderful. We got a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. I, my first piece of property, it was just a dream come true to buy. Um, I got at a pretty good price because a logging company had just came in and, and decimated it essentially. And um, with that, you know, a lot of invasive species kind of take over. So we've had to go in there, obviously learn about all that very plant nerdy stuff. But, um, I, you know, that's my passion is, is creating habitat for wildlife that I mm -hmm. love to observe. Um, I'm, I'm a huge animal lover and, and an outdoorsman. So uh, it's a fun process, year round process to, to really create the best habitat I can for my deer and my turkey. Does that ever help you out with your songwriting when you're out doing that extra stuff? Oh, no doubt about it. You know, and, and, and I always say that, that songwriting, creating what we do is so subjective. You know, uh, we write a lot of songs and a lot of just plain stink. You know, so it's, it's a lot of hours and you get no results. You know, we're only, right. we're only allowed to, to re record and release so many songs. Um, that's really, truly all it's probably worth being recorded and released. So having a to-do list on the farm and, and that concrete work and completing tasks and seeing, you know, things happen. That's not so abstract like music is, is, uh, is what I love about it. So what made you pick Mackenzie Porter? How did, how did that relationship develop? It was, you know, I was just telling Dirk Spentley the story. He was asking about, think about you and how it came about a minute ago, right out here. Um, 
so we had some missions uh i kind of put out into the creative community here in nashville when i wanted wanted to release the song to radio and who's available please submit your your version of think about you we would love to to include you in the in the selection process and i had my team remove all the names from those submissions and we had uh six or seven really strong submissions and so i just started living with those versions and kept coming back to uh, a version time and time again and and started passing my favorite two around to my friends and um everybody pointed to mckenzie so Mm -hmm. i got to go whose version is this and uh and it ended up being Mackenzie Porter. And then I got to discover who she was and come to find out she's just an awesome, awesome talent. And I think she's got a bright future ahead. So it, so rewind for just a second here. How, how does somebody find that audition request when you put it out there? Like, is that yeah. a community thing or is there a, yeah, it, is, it, it was strictly website? community. It was, it was us. It was us putting it out there to, to all the label groups in Nashville, um, all of our management groups in Nashville that we know just friends of, of the industry and, um, you know, myself and my team have combined a million years here in Nashville together. So we, it's a small community, well, you know, well-knit community. And so it was just uh, those phone calls, text messages, and emails. And here, here come the auditions right away. Is that how you started? Is it, say again? Is that how you started being recommended as a vocalist? Or did you just start? You no, started songwriting. I, you started songwriting, right? Yeah, I started songwriting. But, but believe it or not, I was playing a lot of uh, cover shows throughout the Southeast and and around Nashville here and um, had just started really writing and recording songs. And uh, this is back when MySpace was a thing, Raz. Um, And and my my first manager, uh, his, his son-in-law came across my page and and passed it on to him. And I got a phone call out of nowhere. Um, Literally I I, I sent it to voicemail and ended up being uh, the guy that, that went on to introduce me to a lot of great people that ended up changing my life. Good for you. But we're rooting for you here. You know that. I know it. I can't wait to get back up there and see you guys. It's been too long. It has been. All right. Have a great time, CMA Week. We'll talk Thank to you, you soon. Thank you, brother. Y'all too. All right. Lynch see you. On 92.5 XTU.